Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. As I peruse the readings for this Sunday, What jumps out at me is this line in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, I have become all things to all, to save at least some. Hmm. All things to all people. That sounds like a lot. I'm wondering if Paul may need some boundaries around his time and energy. That's been a lifelong challenge for me anyway. I'm here to tell you that trying to be all to all is exhausting and impossible. Following Jesus around in the gospel reading is a little exhausting, too. (laughs) He spends the day preaching in the synagogue, comes home and cures Simon's mother-in-law, and then spends the evening driving out demons and curing more sick people. He finally catches a moment's peace when he sneaks out to pray but Simon and the others come and get him. So he suggests that they all jump up and visit all the surrounding villages, and the preaching and healing begins all over again. Jesus is being all things to all people, and I'm tired just thinking about it. He can't even take a little time to himself without being interrupted, and he doesn't even chide those who interrupt him. Instead, he just keeps on going driven by his mission. He says, for this purpose, I have come. This may seem like the opposite way to respond to scripture, but what's in me is to not be like Jesus in this. I mean, I'm not Jesus. (laughs) Jesus actually is all things to all people, but I'm just me. Jesus lived his life so connected to God that he could move from prayer to ministry without being worn out. But when I skip prayer to get more work done, I feel depleted. He had human limitations too, of course. But Jesus was the Son of God, and I can't help but to think that helped him to stay focused and motivated. Also, He had just a few short years of ministry before he was arrested and executed, and he had things he needed to do during that short time. 
I guess you don't need to worry about burnout if you only have a few years to work. No wonder he was so driven. I, on the other hand, hope to have sustained and prolonged ministry over plenty of years, not followed by an early death. I'm not denying Jesus his humanity. I guess I'm just really feeling my own humanity. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Lately, it seems like a lot of things are popping up about fatigue and burnout. I've seen memes complaining about how long this year has been, and the punchline is that it's only January. I've listened to podcasts about burnout, about eldest daughters, and how we need to have more boundaries around the care we give to people. I read that chapter again in Brene Brown's book, Dare to Lead, about how loneliness can sometimes disguise itself as exhaustion. Burnout. Exhaustion, loneliness, fatigue. What's happening? Honestly, it could be the weather. In my part of the world, we haven't seen the sun for a number of days, maybe even weeks. It could be the post holiday blues and blahs, a time after Christmas and New Year's when we're back to the grind of life and we've already run out of steam for our resolutions. And It could be that people are just doing too much. I know, real life, it's hard to have self-care and rest, to allow a bit of hibernation when there are deadlines to meet and weekends full of things we have to do. For those of you who are parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, and also adult children and nieces and nephews and grandchildren. There are people who need to be cared for. For people in helping professions, work and life are all about caregiving. It's a lot. And yet, and yet we cannot be all things to all people. We are just ourselves. I do not have a remedy for this. I find myself pulled into this all-to-all space also sometimes. One thing that does help me is to remember that it's actually not just me, that I'm one person in a community of people, and that perspective kind of resets and restores my reality and humility in healthy ways. I sometimes have a tendency to fill in the gaps, so if there's something that needs to be done, I kind of just jump in and do it. And the more I jump in and do things, the more people have the expectation that I should jump in and do things. However, then I end up doing what's just not mine to do. And since I have my own stuff to do too, that's just unsustainable and unnecessary. As a community, not one of us is all things to all people. We all have our part to play. And I'm sure this applies outside of religious life too. Think of people in caretaking roles, people looking after children or elderly relatives who may not have help from other family members. I think of people trying to do it all with work and family life. It's a lot. Could there be some help, some support? so we don't have to take on everything ourselves. We can't do everything, and we're just not meant to. Also, I I wonder if there could be a touch of arrogance in the idea that we can do all things and be all things by ourselves. At least, I think that about me. It's not just a misguided expectation. It's also an impossibility, and it's not healthy. And maybe Jesus could spend his short ministry years zipping around the countryside, preaching and healing and teaching. But he also took time to pray. He enjoyed a good meal with his friends. He also took naps. And the thing is, he didn't do all the work himself. He gathered disciples for a reason. He spent time and energy instructing them in his mission and mentoring them while they practiced it, 
and then he sent them out. He knew himself to be in community with others, and he trusted his community to do their part. Hmm, maybe we could take a page from his playbook in this. Not only did Jesus see himself in the context of community, but he understood that he was one with God. He wasn't alone. He was sustained by God in all things. In fact, part of his temptation in the wilderness was seeing himself autonomously, was the one in power doing all things on his own. But he pushed back hard against that temptation. So he began his ministry not alone, but in deep communion with the source of all being, who was actually not separate at all, but present with and in and through him. I think it's this last bit that I find to be the most helpful when I'm feeling the pressure to be all things to all people. Only God can be that. And I know that God doesn't expect me to be that. God calls me to serve in particular ways and contexts, to love the people in my life, and to have compassion for those in need. And sometimes I'm in need, too. And it's okay to ask for help. God calls me to help in the ways that I can and then to live my life and rest. And God calls me to do my part and then enjoy a good meal with my nuns or my family, to laugh with friends, to take a nap. I'm pretty sure God is calling you to do the same. Alone, we cannot be all things to all people. But together, we are the body of Christ. God is with each one of us, and God is present when we are together. In the fullness of God's presence, we are all to all. We may be small and incomplete, but we are enough, because God makes us enough. I hope we can trust that, do what we can, and rest in God's presence. For this purpose, we have come. Amen. Now let's continue and maybe even deepen our reflection. Have you ever noticed a tendency in yourself to try to be all things to all people? What does that feel like? How do you respond to that? How do you work against the temptation to be all to all? What does rest and restoration look like and feel like for you? How can you bring about more of that in your life? Maybe you could spend a few minutes with God and see what God has to say about all of this.
Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other. Peace.